this video, we're going to talk about triggering. And so to get into the triggering menu, you can, of course, go under the RNS menu right here, or you can just hit the trigger button on the front panel. And there's a number of different options in here, um, the different types of trigger that you might be looking at. Um, auto and normal, which we have a separate video on. Um, if you look at the different trigger types, there's lots of different trigger types from edge triggers to pulse width triggers to pattern triggers to rise time triggers to serial bus triggers um, that are protocol aware for the exact protocol that you're working on. And depending on what you choose, you're going to see different options down below. But in general, one of the most common things that you're going to have to choose is your source. And so this is going to be one of the analog channels. It can be an external source. Um, it can be something like a digital channel um, off of the MSO. Um, if you're doing an edge trigger or some of the other um, triggers that deal with edges, you're going to want to uh, specify what the slope is. So you can have a rising slope, a falling slope, um, an either or uh, slope. So both rising and falling. Um, trigger level is a super important one. So you want to make sure that you have the trigger level set appropriately because if the trigger level is outside of the waveform that you're looking at, the scope isn't going to trigger properly. That's where it's looking for that trigger event to occur. Um, this can also have an effect if you're working with something like a pulse width trigger. And if the pulse is not a perfect rectangle, um, then you can have a different pulse width at one point versus another based on where the trigger level is. And we specify the trigger level for you. It's this little arrow right here. So if I go ahead and close this down, you'll see the TL gives you the trigger level and where it's set at that time. Um, if I come back in, a few other things. So we have a couple different um, options. One for hysteresis, uh, you can set this in automatic or you have some options for a small amount of hysteresis all the way up to a large amount. This is going to allow you to basically ignore noise around the trigger um, point or around the trigger level. And uh, this can be important if you have a very noisy signal and you're trying to get a stable trigger. Um, you can have different types of coupling. So AC, DC, low frequency reject. Um, we have high frequency. Oh, we have. We have a couple different couplings that you can do. Um, we have some different high frequency reject and noise reject. The high frequency reject is a five kilohertz low pass filter um, that will filter out the higher frequency content. Um, noise reject uh, basically works with the hysteresis to um, extend on the hysteresis to give you even more noise rejection capability there. And then finally, trigger hold off. This is basically, it's going to trigger and then it's going to hold off for a period of time. Um, if you have, say, a, a burst of um, ones and zeros and you want to trigger on a certain later burst, um, trigger hold off can help you with that to find the exact time that you're looking for, that type of thing. A few other pieces that I'll mention just in the trigger piece up on the front panel. Um, one is you'll notice when it's triggered, this is going to highlight green. Um, this to get you into the trigger menu, this is your source. It is highlighted the color of the signal that you're using for your trigger source. So in this case, channel one, so you can see that they're all aligned um, with the LED coloring. This is a hard button to get to auto and normal to switch between them. And then you have some different run stop capabilities. So run, stop, a single mode, um, and a force trigger capability.